When Mark and Patricia McCloskey defended themselves with a strong show of force against hundreds of aggressive trespassing people, I was reminded of my testimony before the Senate Judiciary Committee in January 2013, when our federal lawmakers were considering banning certain firearms and operational parts of firearms under the bogus justification of increasing public safety. Mark and Patricia McCluskey walked out onto their lawn with a rifle and a handgun to protect themselves. The mainstream media and the leftist internet tried to turn this couple into viral villains, but except for the extreme left, people cheered and supported the McCloskeys for their actions. Americans have watched rioters and looters destroy our cities and kill those who stand up to them, like David Dorn. Police forces have given up precincts and our streets to rioters and looters who attack police officers without fear. It is easier to attack our Second Amendment in times of peace and security, but those attacks fall on deaf ears when Americans see what is happening around our country. That's also why gun sales have increased since the pandemic began and the violent mobs started menacing our cities. Remember, our Second Amendment gives every law-abiding American a fighting chance, and it's worth fighting for. I'm Gail Trotter, a liberty-loving, tyranny-hating lawyer who hosts The Gail Trotter Show. My goal is to keep you informed and to be your spokesman in our nation's capital. I have three reflections about the McCloskey couple to share with you today. First, I was criticized by the mainstream media after my testimony in 2013 for having the audacity to say that a woman home alone might face multiple attackers. But criminals indeed are cowards and frequently they attack with accomplices or in groups of accomplices. I'm in a link down below to my written testimony from the Senate Judiciary Committee hearing in 2013. I went back and looked at some of the reporting of my testimony in the mainstream media from 2013, and my recollection was correct, that one of the lines of attack of the left in the mainstream media against my testimony was that it was unlikely that there would be multiple people attacking law-abiding citizens, particularly in their home, that that was just an absurd, absurd notion. So in the Washington Post, the writer says that I said, guns make women safer because they eliminate the advantage violent criminals might have in size and strength. Quoting me, using a firearm with a magazine holding more than 10 rounds of ammunition, a woman would have a fighting chance even against multiple attackers. Then the article goes on to say, scary looking guns also inspire more fear in an attacker, she said. Young women are speaking out as to why AR-15s are their weapons of choice. They are lightweight and accurate. And in this Washington Post article and commentary in the Washington Post and other articles in the Washington Post, they made it seem like it was unreasonable to assert that there might be more than one criminal or person with bad intent that a woman might face if she were put in danger. And going to a Slate article from the time, Trotter's too busy imagining that women might have to fend off the zombie apocalypse to worry about the real dangers that ordinary women face in this country every day. Well, is what happened to the McCloskeys a zombie apocalypse? And we have seen this in multiple criminal uh, stories in the mainstream media over and over again when they're not thinking to suppress the information that law-abiding citizens frequently face uh, criminals and attackers who are more than one person because they are cowards, they are lawbreakers, and they find that it's true that you have strength in numbers. So going on to a CNN opinion piece, this writer of the CNN piece was trying to say that my contention that you could face multiple attackers was absurd. And so these were the absurd examples that the CNN commentator had. 
Not only that, it's entirely possible that while going around the Beltway, a commando team of Taliban fighters could come up behind me on their way to murder the president, and the only thing standing between them and disaster will be me. So this is a CNN commentator who's trying to come up with the most ridiculous idea possible that the Taliban would be coming around the Beltway to kill the president and he would stop it from happening. But when you put this in light of what's going on around the country and we see all these videos of big mobs of people being destructive and violent and hurting people, killing people, then it's not the Taliban that we have to worry about. This CNN commentator goes on. Trotter argued that women need to have the biggest, baddest weapons they can get their hands on. Why? For the peace of mind that a woman has as she's facing three, four, five violent attackers, intruders in her home with her children screaming in the background. The peace of mind that she has knowing that she has a scary looking gun gives her more courage when she's fighting hardened, violent criminals. If we ban these type of assault weapons, you are putting women at a great disadvantage. So he quoted me there. Then his conclusion from that is, so we can't limit the most dangerous weapons because somewhere there might be a woman who needs one to fight the five violent attackers who have invaded her home and we can't limit the rounds in a magazine can hold because what if that frightened housewife needs to engage in an hour-long firefight? You don't expect her to reload, do you? And just reading this again just makes me remember how absurd the leftist arguments against the Second Amendment, the law-abiding abiding citizens' right to defend herself, her family, loved ones, vulnerable ones, people in the community, that they have to go to such absurd lengths to try and wrest that constitutional civil right out of our hands. And then there was another one uh, on prospect.org, that I'm quoting from, it said, if life were a diehard movie, then yes, this would be an effective way of holding off attackers. So you can see that the left was trying to caricature my argument that we needed to protect the rights that we have under the Second Amendment. And if you read the testimony that I've linked down below, I go into the case of Sarah McKinley, who was home alone with her baby when two violent men tried to break into her house and did break into her house to try and steal drugs, prescription drugs, that her recently deceased husband had for his cancer treatments. So even in the case that I used to go talk to the lawmakers on Capitol Hill, it was a case where one woman with her baby out in rural Oklahoma was up against two violent, hardened criminals. And I think when you're talking about the McCloskey case in particular, they faced somewhere between between 200 and 500 protesters in a private neighborhood. And when I gave this testimony before this, the Senate Judiciary Committee, I was talking about scary looking guns and how it intimidates these cowards, criminals who want to do harm to other people. And in the McCloskey's case, that's exactly what he used, a scary looking gun. And he did not, no harm came to him or to his wife or to his home. And I think when Americans see this, the McCloskeys, and they put that up against the videos that we have all over the news, all over the internet, of rioters and looters and what they're doing around the country, it is clear that the Second Amendment gives us a fighting chance to defend ourselves from people who want to do harm. The second reflection on the McCloskey couple that I want to share with you today is that the mainstream media are trying to demean the McCloskeys in reporting that paints them in a bad light, but it's silent on the backgrounds of the rioters, the looters, and the destroyers. So I'm going to link down below to this piece entitled, Portland Place Couple Who Confronted Protesters Have a Long History of Not Backing Down. This article details the personal history of the McCloskeys in an effort to make them look bad. Even the first sentence of this article shows bias. Quote, when Black Lives Matter protesters marched up Kings Highway on June 28th and turned through an iron gate into the magnificent private street of Portland Place, they encountered a couple who have for years nearly constantly sued other people and ordered people off their property. So the writer of this article calls the trespassers protesters. 
The article doesn't detail their life story. We don't hear anything about these so-called protesters' life stories. What is their criminal history? What have they done? What have they uh, threatened people with? Maybe there's nothing there, but we don't know. This reporter is completely uninterested in doing that at all. Then the, the article goes on further to say that Mark McCluskey was wearing a, quote, pink Brooks Brothers shirt. What relevance does that have to the reporting in this article? It does not, however, describe the clothing of the trespassers. Were they wearing black clothing? Were they wearing masks? Were they wearing things with violent slogans, t-shirts on them? What were they carrying? There is no interest in this article to hold with equal treatment what the trespassers are wearing compared to essentially a signal by saying that, that Mark McCloskey was wearing a pink Brooks Brothers shirt. Now, I'm not in favor of pink Brooks Brothers shirts, but that's not a crime. At least it's not a crime yet. The article goes on to uh, talk about the McCloskeys, but it does not describe the BLM movement at all or what has been happening in that community or in other communities around the country. And the article does share it does report that some of the chants and the things that the trespassers were shouting, including eat the rich, which not was just not just some one off comment by one of the trespassers. Apparently, according to this report, it was a chant. So they're saying, eat the rich, eat the rich, eat the rich. And one of the pro one of the trespassers shouted out, you are a coward, B. Now, Patricia McCloskey in this article, it's reported that she told Hannity, they said they were going to kill us, going to burn down the house. They were going to be living in our house after I was dead. They pointed to different rooms and said, that's going to be my bedroom. That's going to be my living room. And I'm going to be taking a shower in that room. So you can see that there is just just this one article, I could pull up several more, but you get the idea that there was an effort by the mainstream media and the internet, the leftist internet, to try and villainize this couple to make them seem ridiculous, absurd. And when that didn't take, then you have this reporting about the McCloskeys going into their personal lives and trying to make them look bad, trying to uh, call them into question, question their character, which is really irrelevant to whether or not they violated the law or were upholding the law by protecting themselves and their property. So the third reflection I wanna share with you today is that President Donald Trump and Governor Mike Parson of Missouri are speaking out on behalf of the McCloskeys and by extension, all law-abiding Americans. So I'm gonna link down below to an article entitled, Parson says the McCloskeys, quote, had every right, end quote, to wave guns and shout at protesters. Can you see the bias even in this headline? The couple had every right, that's the quote, and then they insert something else, which is the important part of the sentence. The article says they have every right to wave guns and shout at protesters. Well, that's not what the governor said. So they're not accurately reporting what the governor said. The governor said the couple had every right to protect their property. And the uh, governor also said St. Louis attorney Gardner was attempting to take their constitutional rights away. And we saw further developments in this case. The po local police seized Mark McCloskey's rifle last Friday. The attorney for the McCloskey's turned over the, the handgun that was used to defend themselves and their property on Saturday. The local enforced law enforcement says they're investigating the incident. Mark McCloskey was on the news uh, last week saying that he expects to be indicted. And Parson, Governor Parson, said that he spoke with President Trump about it, quoting from Governor Parson, he understands the situation in St. Louis and how out of control it is to let violent criminals off and not do their job and try to attack law-abiding citizens. So this was a quote from Governor Parson saying how he's communicated with President Trump. 
but it really demonstrates how the world is upside down. You see the police and law enforcement in these areas and the prosecutors, they are not going after the people who are violently looting and rioting. Uh, we're seeing some movement on the federal level with Attorney General Barr, the Department of Justice, uh, going after people who have done these violent, felonious assaults and uh, destruction of property. But at the local level, we're seeing a distinct lack of action. So this is the world turned upside down on its head because then they're maybe going after law-abiding citizens who, when the police aren't there or have been told to stand down, they're defending themselves. So it's really just a crazy upside down world. I'm also gonna link down below to an article entitled, President Doesn't Like What He's Seeing. Missouri governor says Trump might intervene in viral St. Louis couples case. This is from the Washington Examiner. And in this article, it reports that Governor Parson said Trump told him he would do everything he could within his powers to help this situation. Parson further said he's thankful that President Trump is going to stand up for people and their legal rights. In this article, it also said that Mark McCloskey revealed that the rumor is we're going to be indicted shortly. I didn't shoot anybody. I just held my ground, protected my house, and I'm sitting here on TV tonight instead of dead or putting out the smoldering embers of my house. So to wrap it all up, the left would like to cancel the Second Amendment. In more peaceful times, they argue for airbrushing the Second Amendment out of our Constitution using the justification of public safety. Now that we live in more violent and shocking times, the left tries to demonize law-abiding Americans who use the Second Amendment to defend themselves. If this couple, the McCloskeys, is prosecuted, that is punishment in itself, even if they're not convicted. It would have a chilling effect on other law-abiding Americans who just want to protect their families. So I'm gonna ask you to do two things today. Praise President Trump on social media and on the White House contact form for standing up for our vital Second Amendment rights, no matter our race, our religion, our financial level, or our political opinions. Praise the governor of Missouri, Mike Parson, on social media and on his contact form for also standing up for our Second Amendment rights. Thank you for joining me today. Please subscribe to my show down below. Hit the bell so you don't miss a daily episode. And also, please comment down below on what topics you would like me to cover next. Thanks for listening to The Gail Trotter Show, right in D.C. Be sure to sign up for her mailing list on her website, gailtrotter.com. And also, follow her on Twitter, at Gail Trotter, as well as on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe now, it's easy. Thanks for listening. Share the truth. Share The Gail Trotter Show.